Hey everybody, Rob Cohe here. Thanks for sticking around and uh, um, learning about Fusion 360. Um, let's carry on finishing up the uh, uh, the base part of our assembly um, with uh, with a few holes. So I'm going to start a sketch on that flat surface on the edge. Again, um, I like to use construction geometry to find the center of things. Just a, just a habit I've developed um, uh, to, to, to quickly place geometry relative to exactly where I need it. Now, Sometimes you'll leave the construction geometry command on. It, it doesn't mean you have to delete it and, and change it. You just select it, go over uh, to the sketch palette, deselect uh, construction geometry, and you can carry on. So a couple circles here. Um, my OCD doesn't allow me to leave the, uh, uh, the, the text in the middle, so um, bear with me on that. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place a point specifically on an angle. And, and I've seen people get out the calculator um, and uh, do some trigonometry to figure out what the dimension needs to be instead of just using a construction line to place this. Um, so I put a point on the outside diameter of the circle, drew a construction line to that point, and then place a dimension to where exactly it needs to be. Uh, it, it, you don't need to bust out a calculator to, to do this. Use, um, use the geometry uh, for positioning. So here, rather than placing three more and doing the same thing, I'll just do a circular pattern uh, in the sketch. And now I have all of the center points and geometry I need for the next couple of features that I'm going to do. So this next one, I'm just going to I'm just going to blow this uh, this hole through the whole part. Um, could I have used the whole command? Yes, um, but really, what I want is an extrude all the way through the part, and uh, and that's just a just an easy way to get that done. So rather than you know, every time you consume a sketch with a feature, we automatically turn off visibility. So just, you know, in the browser, make sure your sketch is uh, uh, exposed when you want to do this. And then toggle back on so that you have a visible sketch for your hole command. We place the holes. We know they're going to be. You click on, on, on the points. And now we're going to go ahead and add our tapped hole. Uh, options here and and one of the cool things uh, that we put in here was, was we, you can actually model the threads as well um, it's kind of cool to see visually so zoom in here you can kind of see that they're actually modeled um, do I need that does it look cool um, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a screw in that anyway so I'll never gonna see it in the model so I, I usually don't leave them on okay so a um, couple other things that we're gonna place here uh, I'm gonna place um, well, actually before I do the fillets I'm gonna I'm gonna mirror this around um, almost forgot about that. Uh, and again, use mirror as often as possible. Save me from sketching on the other side. And now we have most of our geometry um, that we need, except for the final kind of mounting holes for um, all the other uh, components that are going to come in from the side here. So uh, again, I'm going to start a new sketch. And what's the first thing I did? I started projecting geometry because I want to be right on these edges, right? So I'm just going to draw a couple circles here. I, I don't need to type in the dimension just yet because here I'm going to I'm going to use a constraint to make them all equal to each other. And then that way I only have to dimension one because they're all the same, right? And then you see them change. The next thing I'm going to do, um, guess what? I'm going to draw some more construction lines um, to where this thing needs to be. Um, the vertical one, you saw it snapped to the midpoint of that arc. So it's already fully constrained. It, it turned from blue to black. That's how I can tell if these things are fully constrained or not. So I'll place my dimensions. You can see once I place dimension, I can click the other one to maintain um, the same. Another best practice, if they're going to be the same, make them the same. That way you only have one parameter to manage. Okay. So I'll go ahead and uh, draw a, a line that kind of represents the top and bottom midpoint of this because as you can imagine, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mirror um, this part around that mirror line, or this sketch rather, around that mirror line. And now I have the geometry that I need to go ahead and add um, these bosses uh, for our mounting, uh, our mounting holes, um, which is what this is gonna turn out to be. So here I'll hit extrude. Now you'll see that I have to click twice on each of these because it's it's picking up a couple different um, uh, profiles uh, based on the sketch geometry. Now if I were to turn that projected geometry um, into a construction geometry, it wouldn't it, you know, wouldn't have picked it up. So so <clears throat> I've got my extrusion there, and um, I'm going to add a fillet uh, to the edges here. Now one thing about the fillet command is. Um, you know, you want the order of operations of your fillet to to help define the geometry. So I want the round edges 
um, at the back of this um, to, uh, uh, to come out first. So I'll put in six millimeters um, and I might need a little more depth there. I've seen people remodel a feature rather than use the timeline to go back in time and fix your mistake. I put in the wrong dimension. Um, I'll go back in time, edit my feature, um, and get the right depth that I need there. Okay, so the next one, I'm gonna add um, a fillet around the base of this, so it gives it, um, uh, really, you know, this this part could be cast. It probably likely is going to be cast, right? Um, so let's go ahead and remove most of the sharp edges. <laughs> I say most because um, later on you're going to see why I, I'm going to say intentionally forgot a few fillets, but uh, yeah, you'll you'll see why. Um, stay tuned. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and place my uh, my holes here. Um, this will be a tapped hole um, at a certain depth, uh, and again, you know, you have the choice to model it or not. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of up to you there. All right, so a number of features um, that I did there, right? Extrude, fillet, fillet, hole. Here, I'm gonna mirror, big shocker, right? Uh, I'm gonna mirror that ex extrusion, the fillet, the fillet, and the hole about that plane, the mid plane. And you can see why I like to do mid plane, right? I didn't have to, um, I don't have to create yet another work plane in order to do these, these mirrors. All right, so looks cool. Um, add a, a one more fillet here. Um, to these edges um, here, I've sped up the video quite a bit because nobody wants to watch me picking and clicking on this. Um, but what I'm demonstrating here is is you can actually do um, two different diameter um, within the same fillet dialog box. Um, kind of handy, um, uh, you know. I think if you if you want fewer things to manage in your timeline, it's basically around the same point in the design, basically around the same part of the geometry um, doing multiple fillets within this uh, within the same command is uh, it's a time saver uh, for sure okay so I'm gonna go ahead and save this um, and some of you have been watching this all along and like Rob you broke world number one from the very beginning and you know what I did um, but we're gonna get into that here in the next video so just bear with me I know I broke rule number one uh, for those of you in the fusion community probably screamed from the very beginning you didn't create a new component um, I didn't want to create a new component. I wanted this design, I wanted this file to be the container for all my features. Okay, we're we'll gonna talk a lot about that in the next one. So um, a lot of people like to, to add some appearances to this. I'm, you know, hey, uh, I like to add appearances as well. You can drag and drop appearances. Um, you know, did I use the right material on that appearance? Probably not. Somebody called me out for it, so I thought, wow, I better, I better do the right one. But this is cool. So once you grab it, you can select all the features and then apply a different uh, uh, appearance to the selected um, uh, to selected surfaces. So that kind of a cool feature. So I, I incidentally um, was able to demonstrate something else cool. Okay, so I've got my main body. I'm going to save this. Um, and use bottom-up modeling in my assembly design. This is what's new functionality. Stay tuned. You're definitely going to want to watch the next video.